Welcome once again to our daily devotions, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Poppy. Thank you for joining us today. This past Sunday, we celebrated and observed the first Sunday after Christmas, but December 27 was a minor festival in our church year, a very important one, a day that we remember and commemorate St. John, Apostle and Evangelist. John, the author not only of the Gospel of John, but the three epistles of John and the revelation of St. John. John, a tremendous disciple of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the first to enter the tomb, one of the sons of thunder. And today we take a look at the epistle reading appointed for St. John, Apostle and Evangelist Day. 1 John chapters 1 and 2. That which was from the beginning, that which we have heard, that which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of his son Jesus cleanses us from all sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On this day when we remember St. John, Apostle and Evangelist, we have some very important and familiar words, the first 12 verses in John's first epistle. In the first verses of our text, we have kind of a rehash of the prologue of John, John chapter 1. We know that Jesus is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. We know that all things were created through the light. And yet the light, Jesus was not created. He created all things. And then we're introduced to this word, fellowship. We talk about fellowship a lot in the church. Usually it has to do with a potluck meal or coffee and goodies between the worship services. But the fellowship that God is teaching us about here is that intimate relationship, that intimate reunion that we have with God through the bloody death and glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. A fellowship with God that we share with with fellow believers in Jesus Christ. Any other kind of fellowship that does not flow from this fellowship is a false fellowship. What marks that fellowship? Well, of course, the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sins. And now, we who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb... What does this mean for our life together? What does this mean for how we live our individual lives? John, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes, My little children, 
I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. My friends, we need to hear these words. We need to hear these words often. We need to hear these words daily. How often we make excuses for our sin. How often we try to explain away certain thoughts, words, or deeds as a, a, a bad habit or someone else's fault, rather than acknowledging that sin is real. It's real in my heart. It's real in my life. It's real in this world. We can pro pretend that we do not sin or that our sin is no big deal. But when we do that, we make God out to be a liar. God's desire for his children, his little children, you and me, God's desire is that we do not sin. Be holy, as I, the Lord your God, am holy. The blood of Jesus Christ does not give us an excuse for bad or unholy living. In fact, just the opposite. My friends, God's desire for us is to not sin. And yet this is not some sort of Christian perfectionism that is being taught here. No, the reality of the fact that we are sinners, poor, miserable sinners, and the wages of sin is death is brought clear. But if anyone does sin, and we do daily and much, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. He shed his blood on Calvary's cross for our sins. He brings forgiveness, life, and salvation, not only for you and me, but for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. My friends, each and every day, be aware of your own sin. Return to the waters of holy baptism, drowning your sin, your passions, and your lust, drowning them there, dying with them, and daily rising forth a new creation in Jesus Christ, new and free and forgiven and rejoicing in the life and the light and the fellowship that is yours because of Jesus. My friends, may that be your confidence, your certainty, and your joy today and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. Fire. 
your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, we poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To, ra to, to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayer. We implore you to Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world,
do not deal with us according to our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we should turn from our evil ways and live. Graciously spare us those punishments which we by our sins have deserved, and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>